can begin. No? Okay. Uh, buenas tardes from Managua, Nicaragua. My name is Colleen Littlejohn, and I've lived in Nicaragua for most of the last 41 years. Uh, I'm a retired development economist, and before coming to Nicaragua, I was working for a major international NGO in Chile from 1978 to 1980. So I know what living in a dictatorship is. But I guess if you read every day about the dictatorship in Nicaragua in the US and international media, coordinated messages with a change of a few words here and there, you might get confused about what is really happening here. Nicaragua is not a dictatorship. It is a country that has achieved so much and continues to work towards the development of its people, doing things that we can only dream of in the United States. Free healthcare and education, community policing, a country that gets 75% of its energy from renewable sources, 92% food self-sufficiency, and women in at least 50% of public and elected positions. And I could go on and on. The Nicaragua Network, a project of the Alliance for Global Justice, has been working to reach out to people and movements who want real change in the United States to tell them about what is really happening in this incredible country. And also to let the people of the United States know how the US government has been trying to, to destroy Nicaragua, what I call the threat of a good example. Now the Nicaragua Network is organizing delegations of US movement leaders to come and see why we must defend Nicaragua and the Sandinista Revolution. And today you will hear from four members of a delegation that is currently visiting the country. It is an important time to be here. In Nicaragua, a legitimate electoral process is underway in accordance with the institutional rules of the national common good, compatible with international law, and not akin to the authoritarian imperial or neo-colonial conditioning that has sought throughout history to undermine the sovereignty of small independent nations gestating and articulating old new schemes of destabilization, interference, threats, subjuga subjugation, and aggression. But it has become very clear that the United States will stop at nothing to delegitimize the upcoming elections this November 7th. Um, right now, I'd like to pass then uh, the voice to uh, the, the, the compañeros y compañeras that are visiting us today. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. Greetings from Managua. My name is Monica Moorhead. I am a managing editor of Workers World newspaper. In January 1984, I was a member of an anti-war delegation that traveled to Nicaragua in honor of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s legacy of equality, peace, and justice. The Sandinista Revolution was barely five years old at that time. And now, almost 37 years later, through many ups and downs, including the 1990 through 2007 period, and for three months in 2018 with a failed coup attempt, from everything our delegation has witnessed firsthand, this revolution continues to, to thrive as a real democracy by using its limited resources to commit to the well-being of all its people, including mestizos, the indigenous, those of Afro-descent, Afro women, youth, and the elderly. This reality is why the accusation made by the U.S. labeling the upcoming November 7th election in Nicaragua as quote-unquote undemocratic and unfair is an outrage and totally absurd considering the source. How can anyone who thinks rationally take the word of a government that disenfranchises the vote of black people, migrants and others after the 2020 US election? How can anyone take the word of a government that claims to support quote unquote political prisoners in Nicaragua but has held hostage genuine political prisoners in US prisons for the past 30, 40, and even 50 years plus, like Mamiya Abu-Jamal, Leonard Peltier, Jamil Alamin, Rochelle McGee, and many more. In a letter our delegation presented 
to the U.S. ambassador to, the, to Nicaragua a few days ago, we stated strongly that the U.S. has no right to intervene into the internal affairs of another country, especially with their elections. The U.S. would never tolerate any government interfering in their biased elections where the only major choices you have are the two biggest capitalist parties, the Democrats and Republicans, because they can buy elections with millions of dollars with their deep coffers, while independent parties are either minimized or locked out altogether. This is not the case in Nicaragua, where opposition parties can freely raise funds and campaign on their own political platforms. It just so happens that the ruling FSLN government got 72% 70, of the vote in the 2016 election. And this is because all Nicaraguans have benefited from free public educate, health, health care and education from the cradle to the grave. No Nicaraguan had died from the two hurricanes in 2019 due to the national preparation provided by the government. The economic and social development of remote areas in the Caribbean coast populated by people of Afro descent, the indigenous Creoles is given priority with the theme of unity through diversity. The Nicaraguan people have asked us to tell the truth about what is going on today and how the U.S. government is spreading lies and disinformation to undermine their right to sovereignty and independence. And this is a task of this emergency press conference and even once we return home. Nicaragua needs our solidarity, not U.S. intervention. Greeting everybody. My name is Joa Velinevsky. I am a retired professor of mathematics from a community college and a member of the board of directors of the Massachusetts Peace Action. I found Nicaragua to be a beautiful country with a beautiful weather and a country which is blessed with fertile land because of the many volcanoes that are here. That is why Nicaragua is 80% food independent. I found Nicaragua to be like a house with open doors and warm and friendly people, industrious, creative, hardworking, and proud. During my visit here, in my daily walks, I could go anywhere I want, at any time of the day or night, and feel safe and welcome. Nicaragua is the safest country in Central America and Latin America by far. Of course, if you want to learn about Nicaragua, the best way is to come here. But there is an easier way for the smart people that read the New York Times and the Guardian or listen to our government. Just reverse what you hear. <laughs> the truth is the opposite of what we hear and what we read in these sources. Now, I'm not going to go into a long history, but one thing I think is clear from, remember, the Sandinista lost the election and respected the result in 1990 after a decade of vicious contra-war organized, financed, trained by the United States that killed, killed 30,000 people, that destroyed school, clinics, grain storage, and so on. But the, not only the Sandinista respected the result, the Nicaraguan people, as Monica said, elected the Sandinista again in 2006. You see, because the Nicaraguan people understand the difference between a right-wing government and the Sandinist government. Don't be surprised if the Nicaraguan people again elect by wide majority the Sandinist government because they understand that the Sandinist government is committed 
to the benefit of the common person, to mixed economy, and to democracy. Hi, my name is Stan Smith. I'm with Chicago Alba Solidarity, and I work closely with Alliance for Global Justice and Nicaragua Network and the Sanctions Kill campaign. One person we met with on our delegation was Wilfredo Navarro, a former Contra supporter. He was a former opposition politician and a former Minister of Labor under one of the previous neoliberal governments. He is a now a National Assembly representative of the Liberal Party. Two of his own brothers were in the Somoza National Guard and in the U.S. Nicaraguan Contras killed fighting the FSLN. Wilfred was jailed during the first FSLN government. He now praises the achievements of the present FSLN government under President Daniel Ortega. Why? We asked them. Here are some of the reasons he gave. Nicaragua has over just over had just over 50 hospitals when Daniel Ortega was elected in 2007. Now there are 77 hospitals. One third of all the hospitals were built in the last 14 years. Today, all health care is free. Today, all women make up 50 percent of elected positions in the national, regional and local governments. Today, education, including university education, is free. Every child has the right to go to a, day, a child daycare center, which are free and available to all throughout the country. These are, the, these are all rights and benefits that we do not have here in the United States. Nicaragua is the safest country in Central America. Its murder rate is half of what it was in 2006. The murder rate is eight to ten times lower than it is in El Salvador. Since 2000, the uh, extreme poverty has been reduced by half. Wilfredo Navarro adds that an infant mortality and maternal mortality have been reduced by more than half since 2006. Navarro pointed out that in 2006, 50% of the people had access to electricity. Under the Daniel Ortega government, it is now 99%. It's fine, they can see us. There's no screen. They can see us. Oh, in 1989, after 10 years of Sandinista government, illiteracy had been reduced to 10%. After 16 years of neoliberal pro-US rule, it had jumped to 30 percent. It had tripled in 16 years. After 14 years of the present Daniel Ortega government, it is now down to 4 percent. These were some of the reasons this former Contra supporter in the National Assembly supporting the government of Daniel Ortega. We also met with the U.S. The, in that, with U.S. Embassy with the political advisor to the to the U.S. ambassador. He claims that the U.S. desires, quote, free and fair elections in Nicaragua. Among our various responses to this, we pointed out that most people in the United States today, whether Republican or Democrat or other, no longer consider that the U.S. has free and fair elections. Given the progress Nicaragua has made under Daniel Ortega and even according to the former Contra polit supporter Nicaraguan politician, it seems clear that if the U.S. allows Nicaragua to have free and fair elections, the FSLN and Daniel Ortega would win. Our delegation feels it is urgent for all of us to increase our efforts to work against U.S. interference in Nicaragua's November 7th election. It is urgent we focus our op on opposing a new re U new U.S. regime change operation. And it is urgent that we work to oppose more U.S. sanctions on Nicaragua, which our ex-Contra National Assembly representative Wilfredo Navarro calls illegal U.S. aggression. Thank you. Hello and greetings from Managua. I'm Sarah Flounders, the International Action Center and the Sanctions Kill campaign. 
we focus on US sanctions now on 39 countries, a third of the world's population. This is a crime against humanity. And Nicaragua today is under harsh US sanctions. A developing country of 6 million people has been declared an extraordinary threat to US national security. Utterly preposterous, ridiculous criminal charge against Nicaragua. So we came to Nicaragua to see for ourselves this country, it's a dividing line once again for the political movement in the US and worldwide. Those who take the US State Department line once again give left cover to attacks on Nicaragua and we need to reject this in every way. The US is justifying every assault with propaganda and slander, claiming there won't be a free and fair election on November 7th. It's no different from their past lies. In 2018, we saw a US failed coup, regime change plot with social media saturation, mercenary terror, squads of, of uh, roadblocks, calls for the popular FSLN, the Sandinista government to resign. That's the way they push a government out. Now the Sandinista revolution of 1979 was a profound change, but it was immediately followed through the 1980s with a decade of nonstop US Contra war, brutal war. After 11 years in 1990, the Sandinistas were forced out of government. The US really put a gun to the head of the whole population threatening heightened war if the Sandinistas won. And they ruled this neoliberal government from 1990 to 2007. They privatized everything, education, healthcare. It was a neoliberal economy. Finally, in 2007, the Sandinistas won the next, that next election and began a program that has had a huge impact these past 14 years free education, public health with stunning gains, road reconstruction of the best in Latin America, renewable energy, potable water. We visited schools, hospitals, talked with financial planners and disaster relief. 60% of the students, university students are women, 50% of the elected positions. There was a community health post with incredible day-to-day -day, uh, mass education, vaccination. All of this means Nicaragua has about the lowest COVID uh, deaths while the US has the highest in the world. That's what lack of any infrastructure means. So it's not easy to fight for change, for a better life for the whole people in a world dominated by the US empire but Nicaragua is making big changes and that's why it's important to target and focus our defense. Don't buy into or align with the State Department, corporate media propaganda. Come watch, look at the incredible achievements, a breakthrough for a developing country. In closing, I just want to say we ask ourselves why anyone would want to pull down a government that is doing so much for its own population. The most basic steps. This is a big accomplishment and we have to be committed to defending it. All of us who fight for change in the US, who fight for unions, for black lives, against migrant raids, for full rights and participation of LGBTQ people, we have a stake in opposing US wars and sanctions. So we call on everyone to defend Nicaragua. The people united will never be defeated. It defend the national sovereignty of Nicaragua and other countries being threatened by the United States. Let Nicaragua be free to decide its own future. There is a lot we can learn from Nicaragua. And this is why the empire wants to destroy it.
Don't allow our U.S. tax dollars to be used to undermine Nicaragua. Augusto Sandino and Carlos Fonseca, presente. Let Nicaragua live. Well, the press conference is coming to an end, and so is the delegation in a couple of days. But hopefully tomorrow, we will have time to go to the beautiful city of San Juan del Sur. And there we will see a bench uh, made by a, a very close friend of mine who recently passed. But the bench is with Ruben, da on one side is Ruben Darío, the famous Nicaraguan poet, internationally known. And then on the other side is Mark Twain. Just imagine Mark Twain talking to Ruben Darío and saying, you know, that is why I'm an anti-imperialist. I object to the eagle nailing its claws in other lands. And that should be our message to, to our brothers and sisters in the United States. Let Nicaragua live, let Nicaragua survive, and stay away. <laughs> Thank you. Defend Nicaragua. Defend Nicaragua.